Hi guys, so are you mind this one? Titanium, founder of Investing MMT and the co-founder of Pure MMT for the 100% Beyond the Mames, along with my friend Edward Delzio, the author of The National Debit, a must-have book for anybody who wants to understand the monetary system. I also run a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash mine this one for anyone who wants to understand how the monetary system works, how the macroeconomy works in the real world and how to apply that into investing. I also teach bare knuckle charting, which is something that I have developed over the years. All right, guys, so let's talk about what's going on in the market because there's so much garbage. Oh, garbage, garbage, garbage. So let's <laughs> let's listen to this. Okay. So with the recent little spike in interest rates, once again, there is talk about the possibility of bond vigilantes. What is a bond vigilante? It's a bond market investor who protests inflationary fiscal policies. In other words, too much government spending, and therefore they sell their bonds, which pushes yields or interest rates higher. The word vigilante is used because it highlights the ability of the bond market to restrain government spending. When interest rates on government bonds go up, that same government has to divert more and more money to paying interest on its debt and away from the projects and the policies for which they borrowed the money in the first place. The reason why there's talk of bond vigilantes returning is threefold. First of all, the Federal Reserve is reducing how many bonds it buys. Then there's the tax cut, at least in the short term. It means less revenue for the U.S. government, though many believe the cuts might spur growth and eventually lead to more revenue. And this week, very important, the decision to do a big spending package, which means deficits of more than a trillion dollars per year in the coming years. The bond vigilantes haven't reared their heads in the U.S. since Bill Clinton's time. The power of the bond market, though, often surprises politicians who are unfamiliar with it. Two funny quotes. The first one from James Carville, the well-known advisor to Bill Clinton. He told the Wall Street Journal in 1993, quote, I used to all right. think... All right. <laughs> garbage, garbage, garbage. All right. Let's listen to, to, to more garbage over here. Fear-mongering bullshit. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. It is Friday, February 9th, 2018. This is your weekly update. Wow, the wow. markets, the equity markets, those are the ones that get talked about. I'm sure you've been hearing about them, that there's this global contagion now. And whether you live contagion. in Europe or Asia, the United States, <laughs> stocks have been selling off. But stocks are for show, bonds are for dough. Stocks are what they tell you about. The Ooh. real story that's lurking under here, there's a couple of them, actually a lot of them, it's really developing very quickly. One, interest rates are rising. We're seeing it all over the place. We're seeing it, of course, in the treasury market. And with rising rates, a heavily indebted world gets into a little bit of trouble. We're seeing junk debt beginning to sell off with yields there rising. Of course, we saw the yields. And I say, of course, because who could have seen this coming? Of course, we all expected this, right? See? See? <laughs> there he goes. Oh, yeah, we all expected this. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, okay. <laughs> we all expected this. We just had negative interest rates for God knows how long. And we went from negative to positive and everybody now is freaking out. CNBC, oh, the bond vigilantes. They're coming for us. They're protesting the deficits. You know this guy, Chris Martinson, this uh, retard? When we were saying... And I'm saying we, the M, the pure MMTers, we're saying to these people, look at the stock market, look at the, everything is going great, everything is improving, right? Nobody's going to go out and invest their money in an economy that's failing, okay? Uh, look, look at Greece. Greece was, what, tanking. What happened to the stock market? It crashed. What happened to the bonds? They blew out, right? So, um, when we were saying, hey, look, and everything is improving, they were like, oh, no, 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 you're talking about speculation there, buddy. Come on now, we're talking about speculation. The hell's wrong with you? You don't know anything about economics. Okay. Now, <laughs> it went from negative interest rates to slightly positive. Oh, yeah, we all knew this was going to happen. We knew it. See, we were right. The hell's wrong with you? <laughs> we were at all-time highs a couple of weeks ago. Okay. All-time highs in the stock market. You want to know how much, this is aggregate bonds right in here, okay? You want to know how much they've fallen off? Uh, 5%. <gasps> oh my God, it's down 5%. And this goes all the way back to uh, 2006, huh? Okay. 
and everybody's freaking out. Bond vinti vigilantes. We all knew this was coming. The bond implosion is coming. It's the deficits. Too high. Come on, man. You, you people need to stop listening to these clowns. They are clowns. They are not there to serve you. They're only there to get you to click on uh, their videos or their stupid little, you know, tweets or whatever. Okay? Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Look where the stock market has gone. Okay? Since all these idiots who are running around saying hyperinflation, the dollar is going to collapse, bond implosion, Dow 6,000. Right? All these idiots, all the way, the whole entire time, almost a decade of this bullshit. And you people keep going over there and keep watching them. I don't know why. Wrong the entire time. Okay? And now you get this little blip. And everybody's like, oh my god, it's a bond with the Atlantis. The world's coming to an end. The stock market is crashing. Are you kidding? Seriously. <laughs> all right. What are we down? We are down a whopping uh, 8%, 9%. Ooh, it's over. We're done. So the stock market is down 9%. Bonds went, you know, uh, from all time highs, dropped 5%. And that's it. They're now suddenly going to be the experts that are going to tell you what's going on in the markets. And you're all going to run over there. You're going to have 40, 50, 60, 100, 200,000 uh, views. Okay, on their channels, and you're going to listen to garbage, the same garbage that was telling you don't buy stocks, it's just speculation. This is a plunge protection team, the, uh, the world's coming to an end, and hyperinflation. Okay, you're going to do the same thing you did last time, okay, a decade ago almost, okay, and you're going to sit there and listen to them. Think about that. Take a moment and just think about that. Where were all these experts to tell you that the Dow is going to go from 10,000 to 25, 26,000? Where were they? Where were they? All gone. Right? We, <laughs> right? we, don't, we, don't, we don't care about this? No? We only care about a 9% decline in the market or a 5% pullback in stocks. I'm sorry, in bonds. And they're all the way up near 3%. <gasps> Oh my god, 3%. Stocks didn't matter what the economy was doing, that it was going to imp improve. Bonds didn't do that. And now suddenly we care about bonds and stocks. You see? Scam artists. Scam artists. And you guys go out, you, you subscribe to their bullshit, you have four or five hundred thousand views, and oh my god, you know, dollar's going to crash gotta stop it you gotta stop this nonsense how about this uh, scam artist you know go buy go buy the dip buy the dip 400 almost 500,000 views go buy the dip which dip exactly should you buy this one this one this one this one this one this one how about this one the whole entire time you're coming down losing your ass the entire time buy the dip I know what's going on. I'll tell you what value is. The scam artist. Buy the dip. Harry Dent. Right? The crash of 2013. It's coming. Done. <laughs> here you go. 2013. Right in here. See it? 2013. Yep. Crash your came. Right? But now they're going to sit here and claim victory that the market is uh, pulled back 8%, 9% on this. What the hell is wrong with people? That they, they, they keep listening to these clowns. This is who you should be. Okay? Bullshit me. Psych. Get the fuck out of here. Right? This is, this is who you should be. Okay? So I'm going to tell you why you should be this guy and how to be this guy. All right, so I'm going to give you this little diagram, and I'm going to try to explain it to you. Very simple, okay? Uh, government debt equals private sector savings, assets, okay? But what happens is 
the so-called debt from the government is printed dollars out of thin air that go into the functional economy and then those dollars end up in savings very simple it's not very complicated all dollars end up in savings the government cannot be in debt to thin air okay that's not possible you can <laughs> there's no thin air that's going to come and break the government's or our legs okay so we can give back the the money we printed out of thin air that's not going to happen so you cannot call it debt okay it's not debt you can't be in debt to thin air you can't be in debt to nothing that's number one that's the first thing you have to understand two when the government spends those tax credits into circulation eventually they're going to end up in savings why because the money flows from the bottom to the top trickle up economics the problem is that we're selling people the, the trickle down economics that somehow those uh, savings those dollars in savings here okay and let me let me get this out this, uh, ah, can't do it those savings somehow magically flow back into the functional economy and make the economy bigger no that doesn't work that's never worked uh, and it's never going to work the only time that some of the savings flows back into the functional economy is in the economic state that we are in right now okay we have deficits that are three percent we are exporting dollars to the rest of the world at three percent as a world reserve currency we have to do that okay which means what how are we exporting those dollars well we're getting goods and services real goods and services real goods and and services right and that's we're consuming that okay and it's coming back into um to us we are we we reside here okay in the functional economy do you realize that deficits back in 2009 were 10 percent of gdp 10 percent of gdp and everybody back here the whole entire time hyperinflation dollars going to collapse buy gold buy silver right dow 6000 this is not sustainable we can't service the debt what happened why did deficits start to decrease i'll tell you why because everybody started going back to work because of the deficits you understand now if that were not true then government debt equals private sector assets would not be true but it is true it has proven it to you since 2008 the increased amount of deficits put people back to work grew the economy tax revenues rose and the end result was what a better stronger healthier economy the bonds didn't implode the dollar did not collapse in fact it went up okay um, the, the economy got bigger everything got better interest rates went negative <laughs> you want to go back to the Clinton years where we're running surpluses right in here and then we crash the entire economy that's what happened here because if you want to go pay down the government debt and run surpluses what does that mean it means you have to go out from the private sector take those savings give it back to government and then government is going to give it to who thin air that's what it means you see it doesn't even make sense it's just so illogical so what happened well they kept sucking out money from savings and eventually the stock market collapsed the economy started to to, to suffer that's that's what happened you don't want to run surpluses that's insane you want to pay down your debt okay everybody give up your savings give it back to the government so they can give it back to thin air yeah real smart so the increased deficits that are going to a trillion dollars okay and if you're an mmt -er and you're not giving credit to trump for doing that then you're not an mmt -er. you're just you're just an idiot you don't know what the hell you're talking about you're just this little mamey guy running around with his look i'm going to copy paste government daddy could show private sector assets yeah give me a job guarantee for everybody else except me right <laughs> well give me a universal basic income i want to sit at home and i want to get paid with my wife beater shirt on and some sauce on my big fat belly that's not capitalism what are you, what are you guys coming up with these crazy things i don't know what the hell's wrong with you anyway so government under Trump administration we're going to go to a trillion dollars of deficits okay we did the same thing back with Obama right so it doesn't matter who's president I, I've been saying this forever it does not matter who is president okay the, the in the end the US government is going to do what is right 
okay and they're gonna pump in money and make sure our economy stays strong do bad things happen in economies yes okay it, it, it happens so what okay in the end everything is gonna go the way it's supposed to go I don't care who's president left right who's controlling Congress Senate and da, 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 it doesn't matter that's why we have become the greatest economy no single one person can take credit for anything okay it's just the way the, Amer the Americans understand economics believe me we're not like the uh, the Europeans who have no clue oh, austerity yeah okay take away everybody's savings and you're gonna grow the economy yeah good luck with that but right now they're getting away with it by running exports and getting private debt to keep rising okay and they're getting away with it eventually you're gonna see over time they're gonna suffer again and it's gonna get worse and worse but anyway let's skip over that so the, the government is going to pump in one trillion dollars that's going to create more jobs but we are at full employment near full employment we're at 4.1 percent um, uh, unemployment okay that means we have six million people looking for jobs and we have six million job openings jolts jolts okay so we are essentially near full employment now we finally got a little bit of wage increase and everybody starts freaking out all oh, of the stock market is crashing because it's going to cost more for labor and it's going to cost more because the corporate bonds you know they're going to have to pay more on those corporate bonds okay so here are the junk bonds okay forget about corporate just junk bonds right they're coming down a little bit so what so what doesn't mean anything did it matter back in 2016 when they came all the way down here no nothing happened so what okay they bounced now they're coming back down again so what it's not a big deal so the bond vigilantes are going to start selling bonds and start freaking out uh first of all they don't exist okay um they're, they're going to start freaking out and you should start freaking out too because the stock market is down nine percent and we knew this was going to come <laughs> after it's up 300 percent whatever Right? And now we should start fearing that they're going to pump in a trillion dollars into uh, circulation and the vast majority of it is going to go to savings uh, via tax cuts. Right? So this, this is bad? How is this bad? If government debt, not if, since government debt equals private sector assets and we get to keep those assets, the, the majority of it goes to the top 5%, right? that's not bad. That's good because it's now now that we are and let me get back to the point because I <laughs> I'm, I'm getting crazy over here let me get back to the point uh, that I wanted to make before that 10 percent deficits back in 2008 and 9 got us to where we are today okay we're near full employment uh, 4.1 percent inflation is near you know ridiculous levels 1.7 percent okay they haven't risen there was no inflation there was no bond implosion um we have one job opening for every single person that's looking for a job gdp growth is fine right three percent and now they're, they're forecasting as much as five percent not sustainable but as much as five percent and we have reached and now we're getting the the wage growth and now we have reached the the sweet spot in the economy and the sweet spot in the economy is this and like i told you before we have three percent deficits right now and they're going to go to five percent that's it two percent increase in deficits okay so we have three percent deficits right now we're exporting three percent because we're importing they cancel each other out private debt is pumping in money and the amount of money that is flowing back from the savings bubble this is what i call it i call this a savings bubble because there's too much savings in here okay that's not making it into the functional economy uh, now now that at the sweet spot you have to start you know investing back in your business if you want to keep growing it because everybody's consuming everybody and their mom and now that we're going to have those wage increases people are going to have more money in their pockets to go out uh, either consume pay down debt or save okay that's going to make the economy bigger and as the economy starts to grow you're going to need more dollars in existence to reflect that gdp growth you understand how that works and the vast majority of those dollars go out of circulation they go into the savings bubble over here okay now 
you have two choices in the savings bubble. You can either invest it back into the functional economy by creating more jobs, training people, uh, educating them, uh, opening more stores, whatever, okay? Research, development, and so on. You can do that. You can pump it back into the functional economy, which is what's going on right now in the sweet spot, okay? Because deficits are certainly not feeding uh, the functional economy, okay? Or, or you can go into a recession. Everybody can get fearful. They'll reduce the amount of money that they're pumping into the uh, uh, functional economy, okay? They'll take those dollars and go out and speculate in stock markets or bonds or real estate or uh, commodities or whatever. You understand? Because there's no incentive. Why am going, I'm going to go back and start making new stores if, if there's no, no, no one that has uh, enough discretionary income to consume? What corporation is going to do that? Why don't they just go to Africa, open up an Apple store, and that's it, in the middle of nowhere? Go to Somalia. Good luck with that. You'll make a shitload of money. So now we get to the crux of everything. So what's going on in the markets? And that's what I'm, I'm trying to explain to you, okay? And I've prolonged it. I ranted. I've done a lot of crazy stuff. But I'm going to talk to you in plain English. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass, fear, uh, fear monger you, or, or anything. So here's the deal. Any time that the government manipulates... Uh, because the natural rate of interest is zero, okay? If you take $2 bills, you put them on, on, on in, in the corner, you're not going to come back nine months from now, you're still going to have $2, you're not going to have three, okay? So the natural rate of interest is zero. They have to manipulate the price higher, okay, to, to, to pay to affect the functional economy and the savings bubble. So here's the thing. Anytime that the, the savings bubble is affected by anything, such as interest rates, Okay, they bypass the functional economy and they go, they go into into uh, to to pay savers. Or when the economy starts to tank, or when the economy starts to boom and we reach full employment, like we are right now. Okay, anytime these major macroeconomic events start to take place, this affects the savings bubble. And why? How how does it work? Because the allocation of those savings is going to change and when it starts to change it becomes very volatile if deficits are increasing and that means you're going to have more money in, in your pocket to go out and consume or save or or, or or pay down debt or whatever you're going to do the market has to adjust you understand because now it's going to be more beneficial because you're going to have more more consumption coming right that's uh, just think about consumption 70 percent of GDP is consumption okay if you're gonna have more consumption that means you're gonna have to to, to invest more in the functional economy because you're gonna need more stores more you know all these things right so you're sh you're shifting the way money is uh, is flowing in the functional economy you're gonna you, you're not gonna s buy back stocks in the same way you were before okay uh, bonds if if there's going to be some inflation and it's not we're not talking about monetary inflation that's another stupid thing people run around oh we're gonna have monetary inflation hyperinflation zimbabwe okay that's that's garbage you know that's not going to happen then that, that kind of inflation is not going to happen if 2008 and 9 didn't prove it to you and you think it's going to happen now uh, you know you need to go to an insane asylum so if if, if again you're going to take some money out of stocks because you're going to start pumping that money back into the functional economy. You're not going to be buying buying back stocks, okay? Um, the other thing, bonds. If you're going to have inflation, and the good kind of inflation, like I was just saying just now, okay, then at that point, what's going to happen is you're not going to want to go buy a bond that's going to give you 1% with 3% inflation. That's just stupid. You're going to be losing, what, 2%? No. Of course, you're going to start selling now. Okay, and you're not going to accept prices that are going into negative uh, interest rate. Uh, it's just stupid, right? So you want to start to sell those bonds, and that's why you're seeing that bond yields are starting to go up and bond prices are going down. All right, that's what's happening. They're shifting money around. That's all that's going on. The, the world is not coming to an end. There's no crash coming. This is good. There's nothing wrong with these, what's going on in the market. 
these people are not bond vigilantes. They're just normal human beings saying, well, oh, you know, if there's going to be 3% inflation because we have more deficits, and more deficits means more money in people's pockets, it means more discretionary income, means more consumption, uh, maybe I shouldn't sit here and, uh, and accept, uh, you know, 1% in, uh, interest rate with a 3%, 4% uh, GDP growth and inflation possibly going to 3%. Hmm, you know, this is not a bond vigilante. This is a normal human being. You would do the same thing if you, if you understood what the hell, how it all works. Let's talk about the dollar. The dollar, they're, they're doing the same thing. They're selling it off. They're not selling it off because the interest rates are going higher. Why are interest rates going higher? Because the economy is getting better. And they're, they're, we we're finally seeing that wage inflation that the Fed has been talking about. It's coming. We don't know when it's going to come. We, you know, inflation is a little screwed up, whatever. Finally, they, you know, they're getting that, that wage increase. That's good. Right? So they, w they have been doing the right thing, raising rates slowly. But why are they raising rates? Because the economy is reaching full employment. Wage growth is coming. And along with wage growth, you get some inflation with it. But not the bad kind of inflation. Not, not the kind of inflation or monetary inflation where we're just printing too much money. No, of course not. Uh, nor is it going to be, oh, we can't, we can't find enough iPhones in the world to, 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 to meet demand. No, not that kind of inflation either. We're, we're automated today. Okay? <laughs> we can meet any demand there is. The problem is getting the demand. Okay, um, and now we're going to have that demand with that uh, wage increase, and that's why the bond market is is, um, is selling off uh, bond, um, yeah, selling off bonds, increasing interest rates because they're saying okay, inflation should increase because the economy is going to be stronger in the future. So let's sell off the dollar until we see that, uh, and the dollar you know starts to fall because they want to see that. Um, wage increase okay i mean the wage sorry that economic growth okay and once they see the economic growth then the dollar is going to start going back up again you understand how that works that's the way they don't know how exactly how it's going to look or whatever we we'll, you know fire first aim later and that's why markets are so violent now and you see a 10 percent drop in two days back up again back down again and all over the place they're trying to figure it all out okay everybody has different opinions and different uh, views on how the economy is going to look in the future so you see this volatility but this uh, this has nothing to do with an economic crash stock earning yields were 3.73 percent okay just a couple weeks ago all right bond yields were rising and they were they were reaching that uh, th you know they were like 2.73 or something but they were heading for that three percent target area Okay, so when when you're a money manager and you're sitting there saying, okay, why the hell am I going to go out and buy stocks with an earnings yield of 3.73 uh, when I could just go out and buy a bond, for example, at 3%? You, you see what I'm saying? So the money, again, in the savings bubble, the money in the savings bubble starts to shift, okay, because they have to figure out, okay, do I really want to go buy a bond at 3% because maybe inflation is going to be higher? I don't know. Well, what should I do? And the way they do it is they just start to reduce the amount of leverage they have on those savings because, believe me, they, they leverage up, okay? And, and what they do is they reduce it until they figure out what the hell is going on. And then you start seeing this drop in the market. And here, I have the chart to even show it to you. Okay, margin debt versus the Dow, okay? Going up together. So what are they doing? They're reducing some of their margin. They're saying, okay, let's take it out. Let's figure out what's going on. That's all. That's all that's happening. Okay. They're, they're just repricing everything that's going on. While we're at it, Fed's fund rate versus the 10-year yield. Wherever the Fed sets the, 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 the interest rate is where the 10-year the goes. Done. It's very simple. You can see this goes back to the, to the 80s. It goes back to the 70s. Okay, what bond vigilantes, what kind of nonsense they're protesting the deficits. Bullshit. <laughs> the Fed is raising rates, and of course, rates are going to rise. That's simple. That's the way it works. And we all knew this was coming from the idiot, whatever his name is, Christian or whatever, right? They're fooling you. They don't know, they don't know what they're talking about. Remember before I was telling you government debt equals private sector assets? Well, look at the market cap of the of the uh, U.S. stock market. Okay, thirty-one trillion dollars, trillion with a T. Where did they find twenty-one trillion dollars? Had to come from someplace, right? Money doesn't just grow in trees; it doesn't just pop out. 
No, this is all government deficits, okay, that end up in savings. It is private money creation from banks, okay, that flow into the functional economy and then end up in savings as well. And you get just in the stock market. This is just a stock market. I didn't even talk about bonds. I didn't even talk about anything else. Just a stock market. You have thirty-one trillion dollars. Okay, and I've been warning for quite a while now. Okay, that hey, this is not sustainable going straight up like this vertical. Okay, that the the earnings year of the S and P is getting too expensive. Okay, and we're gonna see we're gonna see some pullback in the market, a correction. Here you go. This is January 29th, okay? And and I wrote right in here exactly what I just told you, that the, the, the interest rates are rising, the bond yield is too low, and so on, all right? And, and, and this is, here it is. Here's the, the, the picture, okay? The two-year was going to 213, okay? And this actually went in a little bit lower after that, all right? This is what the market looked like at the time, and I was predicting a 12% correction, okay? Same thing with the NASDAQ, all right? I was telling you these things ahead of time. I w I've been showing you with pictures. February 1st, urgent caution. Sh sharp sell-off is possible. A sharp sell-off. Okay? You want to know where it went from there? It went all the way down here. Okay? 11% drop in two days. I've been showing you, on again, that, hey, this is not sustainable. World stock market is, is you know, is, is getting crazy. Right? And remember, 31% trillion of that is the US okay how about bond bond market same thing it's going straight up okay hey this is getting a little frothy here I've been talking about the the, the savings bubble for, for a while now right nobody's listening to me you know where they're gonna go they're gonna go to uh, Chris Martins and then uh, whoever the fuck else and, and sit here and listen to their garbage all oh, the crash is coming what crash what are you talking about man remember anytime anytime that something is going to affect the savings bubble and money has to flow from one uh, asset class to the other and that goes to the other and then this one goes to the other okay and, and this one goes to this one okay you're going to have this volatility in the market it doesn't mean that the market is crashing or that we're going into a recession it's been eight years that's another one oh the you know, it's, it's eight years man come on what are you talking about we gotta have a recession no, we don't have to. Nobody sets their clock and says, well, yep, Bobby, yep, let's go. Let's go, buddy. Yep, recession time. Let's create a recession. Where, where, where do you guys come up with these things? The Peter Schiff's of the world. Go buy gold and silver. It's, the collapse is coming. Come on, man. Or woman. <laughs> the trillion dollars that Mr. Trump and uh, President Trump and his administration that are going to inject into the functional economy is a good thing. I don't care if you like him, you don't like him, uh, whatever, okay? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that trillion dollars is going to go into the functional economy, which is going to grow uh, your uh, discretionary income, okay, your wages, and you're going to have more to either save, pay down debt, or go out and consume with it. And that is a good thing. The reshuffling of asset classes is not going to be a big deal. Okay, this is not a big deal. So finally, I'll let you go with this. Uh, my analysis of what's going on in the markets. Um, more likely than not, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to continue a little bit lower. Okay, we're going to continue a little bit lower. And finally, we're going to break out make uh, a another uh, run towards the top okay and then we'll see how it behaves and then more likely than not it's going to turn over okay um, again not a big deal uh, you're going to see you're going to see it. and all these people that are sitting here telling you oh the market crash is coming when this thing breaks and it starts going back to the top uh, you know <laughs> they're not going to tell you oh shit I was wrong of course not but I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you that beforehand. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with the economy, okay? When the time comes, believe me, if I'm not the first or second to tell you, I'll be the third or fourth or fifth person to tell you, okay? That things, hey, you know what, they're, they're not going in the right direction. That's it. 
that's my analysis. That's you know my rant, my everything. Um, please stop listening to these idiots. Don't listen to this guy. Don't be this guy where every single day he's predicting the new crash for 10 years or this genius Dow 10,000 so what right what is that 40 45,000 views on, on the, that one and definitely don't listen to this guy because that's all the, that's all these guys are cheap car salesmen trying to get little clicks and little subscriptions and selling whatever the hell they're selling you need to be this guy okay and I'm giving you the tools to be this guy so you understand what's actually going on and be happy that this guy is pumping a trillion dollars making your life better because those dollars are gonna increase wages in your pocket okay in the aggregate don't tell me about some little neighborhood or you know Baltimore or whatever we're talking about in the aggregate 320 million people okay whether you like him or not, it doesn't matter. I, you know, it means nothing. What matters is that you are going to get uh, wage growth. And all these people that sell you these books and little websites and YouTube videos, oh, the Great Depression is coming every single year. Okay, and you guys flock to them and listen to them like it's gospel. Okay, just remember, 1990, this book came out. Right, that worked out great, didn't it? So anyway, enough. Uh, again, uh, if you're interested in learning more about factual economics, evidence-based economics, and not horseshit, uh, come down to uh, IMMT. Uh, join me on Pure MMT for the 100%, where I am the co-founder, along with my friend Edward Delzio, who is the author of the National Debit, uh, who teaches you how the monetary system actually works and how you think it works. Uh, and also I teach people how to take macroeconomic and monetary um, understanding and apply that into the real world and also into investing and it's only five dollars a month and mostly I do that to keep the trolls out okay uh, so come down to patreon.com slash mind this one and join us that's it thank you very much I hope this made some sense to you if not leave comments and questions below thank you bye bye